farmer, cheesemaker, milk wagon driver, miner, gambler, bigamist, assassin. Albert Edward Horsley was born on March 18, 1866, in Wooler, Ontario. The son of English and Irish parents, one of eight children in a poor farm family, Albert was only able to attend a formal school through the third grade. He's best known by the pseudonym Harry Orchard, a minor convicted in 1905's political assassination of former Idaho governor Frank Steunberg. The case was one of the most sensational and widely reported of the first decade of the 20th century, involving three prominent leaders of the radical Western Federation of Miners as co-defendants in the alleged conspiracy to commit murder. Now, when he was young, he helped to support his family by working on various Wooler farms, and at the age of 20, he worked for a time as a logger in Saginaw, Michigan. And for the first time in his life, he had money of his own. In 1888, at age 22, he returned to Willer to marry Florence Fraser. The young couple bought a cheese factory near Brighton. As Albert himself said in his memoirs, I lived way beyond my means and was in some debt, and my credit was not so good. He bought expensive clothing as well as fine horses and rigs. He was soon deeply in debt. Seeking to run away with another woman, Horsley burned the cheese factory and collected the insurance money, thereby settling his debts. Horsley abandoned his family and, together with his girlfriend, headed west to Pilot Bay. That's about 20 miles from Nelson, British Columbia. The pair spent three months together there before they split up and went their separate ways. With Horsley landing in Spokane, Washington, where he got a job as a milk wagon driver bringing milk to the mining camps. Soon he was a miner and a regular at the camp saloon, drinking heavily and gambling his way into debt again. He also married another woman without bothering to tell her about his wife back in Canada. Now using the alias Harry Orchard, he became involved with the Western Federation of Miners, eventually becoming the Union's hired hitman. Among other bombings, he helped blow up a train depot in Colorado, killing 13 and injuring 24 others. Orchard had burglarized the depot, rifled a cash register, stole sheep, and had made plans to kidnap children over a debt. He also sold fraudulent insurance policies. Orchard confessed to playing a violent and ultimately decisive role in the Colorado labor wars. Orchard's confession claimed responsibility for 17 or more murders. In December 1905, the Union ordered the grudge killing of Frank Steuenberg. Harry rigged a bomb to a gate at the governor's house, which exploded when Steuenberg opened it. Within an hour of the explosion, the sheriff had deputized a hundred townspeople and stationed them at all the roads and paths leading out of town. Orchard made no effort to escape, and he slept in his hotel room that night. Orchard was arrested two days later, along with the leaders of the Union. Renowned attorney Clarence Darrow argued Orchard was the sole assassin. And at the trial of the Union men, they were set free. Orchard was sentenced to hang, but this was commuted to life in prison in the Idaho Penitentiary. And in 1952, at age 86 years, he had spent 45 years 
since his trial. For several years, he was allowed to live in a small house outside the walls where he raised poultry and strawberries for the prison, as well as making furniture. Shortly after his incarceration, he converted to the Seventh-day Adventist faith. Orchard wrote in his autobiography, The Confessions and Autobiography of Harry Orchard. Albert Edward Horsley, Harry Orchard, finally died in April 13, 1954, aged 88. He had spent 48 years and is buried at the Morris Hill Cemetery in Boise. Albert's only daughter died childless. He had six sisters, but only one brother, Joseph Horsley, a farmer in Orland. He had several children. There may be great, great, great grand nieces and nephews of Albert today, but there are no direct descendants. Florence, the wife of Albert, abandoned a wooler, was left penniless. She and infant daughter Olive moved in with her parents. They later moved to Winnipeg. In 1906, Albert wrote to her from his prison cell, asking forgiveness for deserting her and her child. She wrote back saying she had forgiven him. And Florence died in 1939. She never remarried. Little Olive married a young soldier who seven months after their marriage was killed in action in France in the First World War. A few years later, she remarried and lived the rest of her life in Utah, passing away in 1972. She never met her father, nor had any written contact with him.